This is Outside the Round with Matt Burrill, a Rage Rowdy podcast. Chase Bryant, my guy. It's been since... Long time. BC, before COVID, brother. Yeah. How the hell have you been doing? Man, it's been a great AC now. Yeah. Been great. I've been great, man. I've just been uh, sort of you know, in this process of putting all these projects out. So it's kind of been a, you know, used to, you used to sit around and like, when are we going to get one project out? Now it's like, holy shit, when are we going to get five out? You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, now I'm working on this. It's just wild. Yeah. New record. Yeah. New record. Well, it's like, it's weird because I've got, you know, I joke around and say this, but it's not a joke actually. Like I, I had these, this little craftsman toolbox full of hard drives and I've always had a studio at home to some, some extent or i've always been kind of the guy that wanted to travel and yeah. like make records in like random places and so you know when i took kind of my little hiatus like around 2018 i guess it was after the brad paisley tour i think it was 2018 yeah and uh and uh i my manager kind of knew i was cutting all these projects and at one point just came to me and was like i think we put them all out like all in a year five projects span it out, put them all out, break them up into EPs and just see if people dig it. And I was like, all right, great. You know, and I, it was just, it was like really wild. And so that conversation arose. I wound up cutting another one, which became Somerville, my first project I put out this year. And then Ashland city, you know, is my next project. Obviously that just kind of like, I've just never been able to stop. It's like, I don't, I've never known when to stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and I feel like while the inspiration hits, it's like, just get on it, you know? So. Yeah, dude. And you're a guy. So you and I first met back yeah. in of all places, <laughs> yeah. freaking New Jersey. Yeah. Cause that's where I was living. And it was, I'm trying to remember if you were like, what if there were any club shows up there, if you did Hoboken or yeah, did... well, there was that, but then I remember there was an infamous night that, we played a place called Prospectors. Oh, and that was a big yeah. bar fight that night. And yeah, it was like everyone off stage were all in the middle of this bar fight. It yeah. was the nuttiest Mount thing. Mount Laurel, New Jersey. That That's is it. south. That is New Jersey is an interesting place because obviously you've got like you've got different sections. You can get from one side of the state to yeah. the other in about yeah. three and a half, four hours. Small as fuck, but there's a lot of people, and yeah. it's like so so dense. But it's like. North Jersey, which is near where I grew up in mm-hmm. New York, just over mm-hmm. the border. It's like Sopranos, like how you doing, like yeah, the Guinea yeah, shit, yeah, yeah, real, yeah. the real Guinea stuff. And that's like your Italians and more like your New York City influence. Then you have like the middle, which I call like the armpit. Like yeah. it's Newark. It's a little dirty, a little grungy. And then you get down south and they call it the Garden State because yeah. of all the produce that comes out of there. And there's some rednecks. There's the, we call them the pineys that live in the pine barrens in the <laughs> yeah. state, in the, in the woods yeah, in South yeah, Jersey. Yeah. And those are the folks that join you at, at a place like Prospectors. Yeah. And that venue is wild. I think I was there that night. I think it was that night because what I remember was we were trying to come up with a new show intro that was like, just like, just down your throat, right? Because at the time, I think I only had Take It On Back was like out. And yeah. it was obviously doing really well. And, and, uh, we had changed our show intro from like Jack Ingram, keep on keeping on to Metallica fuel. <laughs> Dude, we walked in the video and people were like scared. Like what the fuck is going on in yeah, here? That was before yeah. the whole rock and country thing really. Yeah, crossed exactly. Over. So Hardy wasn't quite, you know, Hardy yet. And, yeah. and uh, so we were trying things early on and then we get up there and play these, you know, like pop country things at the time you know so anyways yeah. but it's yeah man so i'm kind of glad to be here today with you and hanging out again man so yeah man good. and then last time i saw you in the flesh was at red door yeah that probably would have been it yeah because i moved here 2018 i moved there october 2018 and i know yeah. that's kind of when yeah the transition of of stuff and just yeah. life kind of happens and yeah. everything man because yeah. it's like you were you were road dogging it. Yeah, hard. We played, we played a lot, headlining and opening, and just like yeah. random gigs. Which I got to do some of that too. Like I got to be a tour manager for the last few years yeah. before, and then I got off the road last January. And the road life is it's a lot, yeah. especially at that level. Like where you have a song that's popping, yeah. but you're like figuring out yeah. who you are. But music's always been in your blood with your family right, and things right. like that. Right. 
and going all over the country like yeah well i you know it's 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 odd too because i took a break at like the the weirdest time because it's like i kind of kind of came off the road a little bit and trying to figure out what i was doing musically and kind of wore out on what i was doing musically and then so like going on the road now it's like i'm still kind of dealing with the anxiety of it because yeah. it's like what am I doing? Like, how does this work? You know, it's like a, it's another world. And like, we've been doing a lot of fly dates and, you know, privates and festivals and things of that nature. It's like, we haven't quite gotten back into like the me headlining my shows and stuff yeah. necessarily, like my kind of like clubs or whatever. And so it's definitely, it's definitely been a change of pace, but, but you know, there's, there's also another kind of like gratification that comes from the road. Like when, when it's good, you know, yeah. like when you're, when you're, when people are dialed in and like really getting into new music also feels really good. And I, and I think that was kind of a sign, like we got to do something, you know? And, and so, uh, yeah, it's, it's like, a the whole COVID thing happens and then you go back out on the road and it's, everyone's excited to be there and you're trying to figure out where do I fit in this equation? Like how, how does this work again? Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, I was doing, I mean, I was touring hard, you know, like first tour, we did the Brantley Gilbert thing, and that ran forever. I saw you on that tour too, and that was nuts. You know, <laughs> the BG a, Nation, especially back in those days. Oh my god, that was a, that was a machine, dude. Those fans, crazy. that was it was rabid, and it was you know it was me and and Aaron Lewis and him, and then Tyler Farr came on later, and then it was like the four of us, I think, or maybe just me, Tyler, and Brantley, and then we, you know we come off that, and and we're not sure what's going to happen. Well, then. McGraw calls me on the phone, like just cold calls me one day. And I kept it funny story, but I kept declining the call because it came through as like, I didn't know the number. And I just was like, what in the world is this? And it was like private or unknown or whatever. And then finally I'm like, hello. And he's like, Hey, this is Tim McGraw. You're in my wife's hometown tonight or wherever we were playing. Like she was, I think it was star Mississippi. Yeah. And old dominion was opening up for us. What I remember. Wow. And I dropped my bag on the ground and I was like, what do you want? <laughs> and he's like, well, will you go on the road? You know, do you want to go do some shows this, this next year? And I was like, yeah. So we, boom, we're off doing that. And then we're doing that headline run. And then we're, you know, then it's like Paisley. We're on the Paisley and then we're at Flats. And it's like, it's just like, I just never saw the light of day. Yeah. And so I think coming off the road for a while was like the greatest thing that ever happened to me because that's the first time I ever really felt normal. Yeah, you, you can know? finally breathe. Yeah, yeah. And it was nice, but I'm also at the point now where I'm like craving it. Again, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm in a different headspace now than I was then, and, and I just feel like I'm, I'm a lot healthier, you know, see life in another way now where I can appreciate it more because I've had so many things to be appreciative of but they were all happening so fast that I never really got to slow down and accept the fact that what I was doing was in, like most people killed to do that. Yeah, and how old were you when, like, how old are you right now? Well, I'm 31 now. Okay. Um, and I think, I'm, am I 31? I think I'm 31. Yeah, I'm 31. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and so, uh, but I was a kid when I started playing. Yeah, you know, and I was doing shows locally and so on and so forth, and then got a record deal in L.A. and I moved to L.A. when I was sixteen. Jeez, I was out yeah, there dude. for a couple of years, and then I came out here, and then I didn't tour for a while, you know, because I was bit, trying to be a songwriter and you know wanting to be a producer and wanting to do all these different things, and and then I had this little rock and roll country band. Really, it was just this really cool, like reckless little band I had. And um, it was me, the, the Adam Box, the drummer for Brothers Osborne, a guy named Andy Prince was playing bass in our band that is in a band called Manchester Orchestra now. Oh, wow. And, uh, and uh, God, I'm trying to remember who else played with us. This guy Ford was playing guitar with us. Anyways, F F Ford's great. And, uh, and uh, man, we just doing these little residency shows at a club called The High Watt, which is over at Cannery Ballroom. Oh, yeah, dude. I love love that place, and I believe it just it's just yeah. come back. Yeah, and so like, well, so like we were over there doing like these kind of kind of one off shows. Me and there was a girl named Lucy Silvis. Oh yeah, you know Lucy yep. John's oh, yeah. wife, yep. it's killer, unbelievable. And so we would like trade off, like she'd open one night or I'd open one night, and we're just kind of doing these little you know things. We did a handful of shows, and uh, 
And then it kind of parlayed into like we just started doing the show. And I was obviously the artist and the writer and, you know, and the guys were just, we were just, they were playing in the band, but we're obviously a big part of it. And we're rehearsing this little garage and then slowly here come like record execs, you know, John Esposito's there one night and, and then Benny Brown starts walking into the equation of John Loba and then it's Scott Borchetta's in the room. And then, uh, you know, it, it was just this, Brian Wright and and it just like started this underground little swell started happening and and then boom it was like record deal hits we get I Heart on the verge we were it's like it's just a freight train that never stopped yeah you and know? being young like that's when yeah. folks are figuring themselves out I was out. a kid I remember being yeah. 19 20 21 yeah. years old and not knowing what I was what I was doing in my life. Yeah. So to get thrown into that, bro. Yeah. Like yeah. it makes sense why you needed to take a break. You yeah. Were, you were just on this train that had no stop and you yeah. needed to catch your breath. Yeah, I had to. I mean, I really had to. And uh, but I feel like now doing that, I feel like I'm in a more central mindset of yeah. like the music that I want to make and need to make. You yeah. know, and it's it's definitely, you know, there's parts of these projects coming out that's a total departure from anything that I've done in the past. And there's some stuff that feels like things that I've done in the past, you know, but I, I you know, I'm thinking thankful for the music I made before but you know I'm thankful for the opportunity to still get to do that you know yeah to get to so. do what you yeah. want to do there's so much power in that bro yeah, yeah. there's so much power yeah. you've learned so much on your journey to yeah. now you're like I want to be me I want to yeah. be Chase Bryant yeah. I want to do yeah. my thing yeah and with with projects that you're putting out now you're getting to do that yeah that's got to be yeah. very rewarding to be able to do what you want to do and have a team that believes in you yeah and really has your back not saying that you didn't have that before but like right. but like being in the position that you're in now and being wiser like that yeah. does come with age well there was a time where i thought about <clears throat> you know i moved to texas for a couple of years um there was kind of this time where i was like i don't know you know i don't know if i'm that was kind of coming out of a publishing deal and trying to figure things out i was like i just don't know if this is like I don't know anything else. And is this the end all be all thing for me? Yeah. And uh, anyways, my, my wife made a statement at one point and she said, well, and, and she wouldn't, she would be like rude, but she was kind of making a joke. She's like, well, I hope you don't do anything else. Cause it's the only thing you're good at. <laughs> and I sat down and thought about that. And I was like, why would you put so many years into something to just see it all go up in flames? You know what I mean? Cause you're the guy that's got to torch it, you know, yeah. you got to burn it all off. And, uh, and I'm still in love with it. I still love writing. You know, I still love writing. I still love making records. I still love playing shows and getting to do things like this. It's like there's there's that you always say like, oh, I'm so thankful to be here at five o'clock at a radio station. And the last thing you want to do is be there at five o'clock in the morning at a radio station because you've been doing it for a hundred days before that. Yeah. But now looking back, it's like I really meant that. I just didn't know it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now I look at it like I really meant to be thankful for, the, for all these things. And I've got to sort of reflect, you know, so it's been good. Yeah, dude. And seeing your, your live shows back in the day, bro. Yeah. And I can't wait to yeah. see one see one here coming up. Yeah, we definitely have yeah. to get out to one. You with a guitar in your hand, bro. There's, <laughs> there's, guys, in the, there's guys and girls in this town that, that can sing, that can entertain. Mm -hmm. But there's not a whole lot that can do that with a yeah. fucking guitar in their hand yeah. like you. Yeah, there's do, a, bro. Well, man, there's I'm, something like like it's just yeah. you with a guitar, yeah. bro. So I remember being front row at those shows and being side stage at those shows and seeing that, be like, damn. Yeah, well, there's definitely something. there's definitely like you know I've got some guys that that I could just name off the top of my like John Osborne. I think yes. is incredible. Yeah, like stupid good. He's like definitely more technical than I am. Like technically good yeah like he he knows like he can tell you everything about it like he can tell you everything about a guitar and everything about a solo and knows how to take it from somewhere i don't i'm not that guy i i just i just you know like i was always scared of guys like him and charlie and and uh you know like man i was thinking the other day like hunter hayes like yeah dude one of the most like dangerous human beings on earth at any instrument and uh and then you know i sort of 
my thing has always just been kind of like free willing and just trying to be as reckless as I can. Which I, know? which and is so, as as somebody who was yeah. in, in, with Blaze Rowdy, we say front row or don't go. So yeah. we're in the front row yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. we love that. Yeah, man, that energy. So that's my that's my thing, and and I feel really weird without not having that guitar there. So I've always sort of, you know, I've always sort of relied on that, and that's and and obviously that's been a big part of my career, and I think. It's funny to know how many people like don't understand that. Like, will come see and be like, "Oh, I never knew you played the guitar." And it's like, <laughs> "What? Come on!" I mean, you know what I mean. And it irritates me now because, like, okay, uh, hot take here for a second. But how many times have you honestly been sick on like TikTok or YouTube or Instagram, and you're and you're watching it? Some guy is sitting behind a piano like he's actually elton john or something yeah. and he's sing and you know he's not playing yeah or it's like an unplugged keyboard and it's like man when i came here like d dude d i remember seeing hardy play at soul shine pizza yeah doing writer's nights going holy crap that, that guy yeah. is good yeah and like watching him play like guitar solos on his instagram page like on a paul reed smith guitar or something i think it was and like i remember reaching out to him being like man i think you're you know you're incredible like you could kill her tone or whatever and 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 you had to have those weapons in your pocket like you had to be a writer a player a yeah. producer uh something you yeah. had to have all that and it's like there's still a lot of great music but there's also a lot of like these people that try to fool like it's you know what i mean it's like it's like driving a ferrari to a party to impress a girl or something but you don't actually own a ferrari yeah why drive it yeah like why not just drive your honda civic up there and be cool yeah you know what i mean it's like i don't know it's like don't go to a rodeo and carry a rope unless you're willing to get on the back of a horse and rope a calf you know yeah. it's like that's just so i you know so I'm trying to be more proving in the fact that I, I still have to prove that I can play a guitar and sing songs for a living. And that's yeah. just really strange to me. Yeah, because you came to town at a at a time when obviously it's like it's like even like a little bit of a different era, like post COVID with the with the TikTok stuff, yeah. with with guys and girls getting an opportunity without getting reps of playing shows, without yeah. having those residencies and things like that. Like what year did you get did you get out here? Well, I got here and I got here as soon as I could, but it was like 2011, 2012, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, which is a huge time in the chapter yeah. of Nashville. Yeah. That's when the boom kind of started. My rent was like 300 bucks a month, everything included, when I was living here. <laughs> Absurd. Yeah, and I, mean, and I mean, man, like, that's what I missed most about this town was the fact that when I, when I came in, man, I, like, we we lived in this little house over on, I, I lived in, I lived in this house over on South, uh, in South Nashville, kind of like off Paragon Mills, all yeah. that stuff over there by the zoo. <laughs> Fitting. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, I lived in this basement, and the guy that lived upstairs would fill in for uh, Junior Brown's wife when, when she wasn't playing acoustic guitar with him, you know, the, like pedal steel, the lap steel, Telecaster picking dude. And anyways, so I was learning from him some things, and then two doors down, this guy Ford Thurston lived in, and he was like, he was he was a great guitar i mean still is a great guitar player but he he was already playing on some bigger gigs and doing some stuff and then and then me and my buddy adam were kind of living together and then he's living over there playing with me and then goes on to play with the brothers and then it was like uh this guy luke nice was in in and out of there living there he went on to play with aaron lewis and played with a bunch of people and then it's just like this constant flow of people. But what we did was we were always in that garage and we were always working like on our craft and trying to get better and trying to be seen. And, and it, it's, it's wild now that you're still, you know, it's, it's just crazy to me that like, I think about like Tracy Lawrence, right? Like being over at our, at our management company now and like how crazy it is that like, 20 years later someone's like have you ever heard paint me a birmingham like that's a great song isn't it it's like yeah i heard that shit 20 years ago yeah. like he was valid then he's yes. still valid now yeah you know what i mean yeah. it's like the weirdest yeah. thing in, to me yeah. it's like it's like you know it, it reminds me of like going into target like in like circa 07 08 and then you find a beatles shirt 
you know, and then you're the coolest kid in town. But it's like, dude, the Beatles been around since the six. They were good at then, and they're still good now. Yeah, and that's how I feel about it. It's like, it's like, it's it's crazy. We're in a whole new world of music, and it's done a great. Th- and I think it's like done bad and done good. Yes, there's you know pros I mean? and cons for sure. Well, okay, so like, look at someone like Tracy, though, right? Like, I mean, it's like it. it I'm sure he probably feels like he probably did in the '90s, like. Where he's like people have caught back on to that, and it's yeah. and it's given us great music all over again. Yeah, him or Clay Walker or you know whoever is part of that whole like regime of those guys from the '90s and so on and so forth. And then other artists like you know like what Riley Green done taking guys out and Blake Shelton doing that thing the other night in Oklahoma and so on and so forth. Like I think that it's really cool, but then I think there's some things where I'm like, is this real? Like, is this actually good? Is there a lifespan in this? Because you look at someone like Bailey Zimmerman, yeah, who's like, I watched this thing this morning on him. I think those songs are great. I think they're great songs. Yeah, I probably wouldn't sing them, but they're great. Like, yeah. there's a place for that, and so I think it's done really good. But then I think there's some where I'm just like, I don't get it. I won't ever get it. Yeah, and that's okay. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's just a different time, and it's completely different from when I moved here. You know? Yeah, it's even different from when I moved here, and that was. Only like six years ago. Yeah, and it's like a it's, it's there's a lot of differences in the sonic sound of Nashville. And coming in when you did in 2011, 2012, that's like the the bro country era. Yeah, and like there was like a movement, and yeah. even then there were folks like hating on the changes that were going on then. Well, dude, in so, so let me tell whole... so let me tell you this. I'll tell you one of the I've never told this story, but this crazy story, and you'll you'll get like what I mean in the time frame of when I was here. Yeah. But, so we come out of those high watt gigs and there's some label interest. <clears throat> and at the time I was working with two managers, uh, great guys. And, and we, Benny Brown at Broken Bow wanted me at Broken Bow. And I told him like I was in, yeah, like great. But Scott Borchetta calls us and I, man, I was I had never done a business deal in my life. Oh, you're you just know? making music with yeah. your buddies. And I'm just like, everything's being thrown at me. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like, this is cool. So I got to take the opportunity. Just got to feel it out. So I'm driving down Division with my in my manager's car. And I'm only in town for so many days because I don't even know if I live here yet. I think I might have lived. Yeah, I think I, I was living here. I was living here because I was already doing the high-watt gigs. Anyways, so... We get this phone call from Jeff Gregg, our agent at CAA, and he says, Jimmy Harnon wants to meet with Chase at, at Big Machine, like, not tomorrow, like, right now. And we're like, okay, well, can, do we turn, th- yes, turn around right now. So we turn around and we go back to Big Machine. And we go down to this room, and it's like this cage room thing, you know, that was, like, fitting for some something they had. It was like a boardroom type thing. We go down there and I meet with Jimmy and Jimmy's like smiling and he's cool and I'm playing some songs for him and so on and so forth. And he's like, I'll be right back. And he comes down and Scott Borchetta walks in and I'm like, what the fuck? Because Taylor was such a big deal that you knew about Scott. Like Scott was a celebrity in his own right. Yes. Right? So he walks in and he's like, all right. He sits down and he's like, Just tell me about yourself. And I'm like telling him about myself and I love, and Scott's a great guy. Like for anybody yeah. that doesn't know, like he's a sweet guy. But also, like, very smart guy. So Scott sits down and he goes, play me your favorite song ever. At the time, it was Fleetwood Mac Dreams. And so I play it, key of F, you know, doing the Lindsey Buckingham acoustic stuff and then singing the song. He's like, all right, play it in F sharp. And I go to reach for a key, don't capo it. I was like, okay. So I play it in F sharp. I play it in G. So I start playing it in G. And, you, and I'm moving these inversions, like, up the neck, making it sound like just transitioning, you know, like transposing these things. Like, all right, keep going. I was like, where do you want me to go? Play it in B flat. So I'm like, so it was like a test for him to me to like, how legit are you? Because people are saying you're legitimate, but I'm about to find out like how deep this goes. I played it every which way I could. And we were in talks of doing a deal and it all fell through. But what it taught me was you better be ready at every freaking moment because if someone asks you and you say you're legit, then be legit yeah. and own up to it. You know what I mean? And so it was a learning lesson, but it was just a different time. You know? Yeah, it was a different time. Yeah. It really it really was. And now folks are able to have success and not even be here. Like not yeah. even, you don't even have to do the, yeah. the Nashville thing. 
Which radio tour blows my yeah. mind. Yeah. Well, yeah. And radio tour even changed during COVID when it became Zoom tour. I know. And dude. people didn't. People just had to get up and yeah. just be sitting in front of their computer as opposed to traveling around and taking planes, trains, and cars and yeah. whatever they could take to get to I those know. gigs. Radio tour just. I saw it on the other side. Yeah. Being a radio guy, we were spoiled. Radio yeah. folks get spoiled. Yeah. But uh, what was what is going on a radio tour like, especially at a young age when you're getting thrown all that stuff mm. and you're on that train of just go, go, go? Yeah, well, I wasn't like in a bus. I was flying and staying in cities for multiple nights rent, when rent, I was off. Rental cars. Rental cars, going all over the place, driving through New York City. And, um, what a joy I, that, that is. That year, I think <laughs> I was gone like almost 300 days that year. And, nuts. and it was nuts. I wrote down every PD, MD, every everyone that I met at a radio station, I've got a book at my house that I wrote down every person I met. If they said they had kids and I could remember their name, I would do that so that when I got back, so it was always a constant reminder of like I could keep up with those people. And it was really cool. And I met a lot of great people. It was exhausting. And it was also really weird too, because I was always sort of like, I got a bad sort of got a bad rap like people were always like hey he thinks he's too cool or i he thinks he's whatever and i so the confidence and cocky thing kind of kicked in and i would admit that i had a cocky side arrogant side I feel because like you have to have a confidence to be an artist yeah. though Everybody's but what they somewhere. don't understand at radio is you know like we like i was a weird kid like I, i'm not saying i didn't have friends and because i did i had friends and i played sports and i did all the stuff but i was odd i was like different and i talk a lot but i'm also like really anxious in those scenarios where i'm like what what am i gonna say next and and so i think i got a bad rap for a while and then i had to make up for that but i was also the person that when people would say things like you know, I'd, I'd try to be better, and then people say, take it on back, it's too repetitive, it won't be a hit. And I'd go play their radio show, and I'd play take it on back six times in a six-song set. <laughs> so <laughs> I paid for it. <laughs> you know, to a certain extent, I mean, I, I, I sort of made the bet I laid in. But um, it, was, it, was, it was exhausting, realistically. I mean, but it was also, like, really awesome to be riding in a car and then you, you you get out you play the radio station you leave and they like you and they play your song on the radio and it's like whoa what is this you know and and uh it was really cool i mean i i wouldn't trade anything for the world because it was hard work but it was good work and yeah. i met a lot of great people in that and i still you know i still have people that i love dearly at radio and i think there's some great things but it was just it was it was nutty because when i came in there was no bobby and then bobby bones came to town and then that was who i think that guy i know people look up to steve jobs and think steve jobs is like a brilliant like bobby bones should go down as one of the most brilliant people he really should yeah because what he has done for radio and what he has done for young artists and the power and that country, was behind country music as a whole dude but behind the power behind him pushing a fader on a new song on radio is incredible and something that he believes in and he's also really smart and so like when he came in it changed the whole like the whole mindset of radio was so different yeah the billboard yeah i'm on my way to san jose nope you're coming back you're playing bobby bones this morning and it's like okay so you, so you go in and you meet him and you're almost terrified because he's just larger than life radio guy that at the time i didn't even know what he looked like because instagram was a thing but it was still kind of like social media was still kind of figuring itself out you know and so like the radio game just changed drastically yeah you know what i mean and uh and i call it a, and, and people say it's not a game it is a game it, it totally is a game it is. It's 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 who likes you, what crowd are you running? You know, it, it is. But but there's also that's what it, the, the, people don't understand that there's there's music and there's business and there's the music business, and both those things go together. But I always used to say that it should just be called the business of music because at the end of the day, if you want to be successful, that's what happens. Yeah. And if people say, "Nah, it's not true," what well, is true? Because TikTok is business. Yes, it is. Instagram is business. YouTube is business. Gigs are business, and so. It's just a. It's an interesting way of seeing how the world turns in the music industry, and um, and it's just a. It's a. It's a really cool wheel to be a part of. Yeah, you dude. Know? Yeah, man. Challenging. It is. It is a challenge, and that's what keeps people going. And it's just like just like any business that there is. You have to. Yeah. 
adapt. You have to yeah. figure out how to continue on the road that you're on. Mm-hmm. Like nothing's yeah. going to be just given to you. You, you have to earn no. it and you have to be cerebral yeah. with it. And, and you have to be ready for change because you know this, like music has changed drastically yeah. since then, you know, and like country music is there's obviously some that's really accepted now and then there's some where i'm like shaking my head like i I, what what, how how did this get here how did we wind up in this spot i don't hate anything yeah because there's 30 some flavors of baskin robbins ice cream nobody likes the same exact thing as the person before them a lot of times and so i think everything's got a place i you know i struggle sometimes trying to wrap my head around certain i've got theories on certain things and i'm probably wrong about them but you know i gotta say it's like with change i found myself i never wanted to be the jaded guy you know you never want to be that no, guy you never, especially when you move to town and you meet the no. jaded guy you're yeah. like i'm not gonna be this guy yeah because you write with him three or four times and the minute that you write with someone else he thinks you've traded him you know it's like you don't want to be that guy you didn't ever want to be the guy that's jaded and the guy that hates on other things yeah I, I just, my, 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 my persona or my thought on it now is like, when you come here, be good to people and be accepting of people and, and try to get as close to understanding everyone as you can, but don't be fake. It, like, if you don't like something, don't like something. Yeah. If, like, you, if you like yeah. something, like it. Yeah. But we don't have to go on Instagram and bash everyone and their mother because it, because it did, you woke up and that's not the tea you wanted to drink. It's go, like go drink the tea that you want to drink. And yeah, and just leave it yeah, alone. Yeah, and that's what we're passionate about with Raised Rowdy. Like you have a lot of online sites and yeah. things like that that talk about things they don't like. Yeah. And Nikki mm-hmm. and I have this philosophy that you spend this energy talking about something you don't like. You can be putting that and be passionate about what you do like, yeah. and it'll be that much better of a piece yeah. of content because it's something that you're passionate yeah. about. Yeah, like, exactly. Talk about the shit that you want to talk about yeah. and that you want people to hear yeah. because if you're putting out something that where, you're, where you're hitting on something, people are going to go and check it well, out. Here's a brilliant too. concept nobody ever thinks about. You ever listen to records you hate? Not usually. Right. So why, why talk about shit you hate? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, just you just I don't hate anything. Yeah. I'm just not going to listen to it. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to listen to what I like. Yeah. And right now, there's a lot of stuff I like. Yeah, what are yeah. some of the well, things Oh, I mean, like, like I, dude, like, I, <laughs> I, Hardy, that stuff's brilliant. It's so And cool. Morgan Wallen, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's great songwriting. That's what I like about it. Like, the Morgan thing, I dude, and, and I don't even know if you would remember this. I mean, Morgan and I kind of came out around the same time you yeah. know like he had uh, the way i talk and i was on take it on back and morgan and i came at the same about the same year because i remember in that year it was like me and him and kanan smith and sam hunt and there was a bunch of us kind of coming out the whole same time way. that yeah. was that was your class almost you, you just yeah. knew that you didn't want to be on an acoustic round with sam hunt because if you were, nobody gave a damn about what you had to sing about, you know, because it was just girls and they were all there to see Sam. But anyways, yeah. I, this is a quick Morgan story because I just, I love this, I love it because now I can look at it and just from an outside perspective. And, and I'm not the kind of artist that like, I don't have a ton of artist friends, you know, like we're, I have a lot of artist buddies, but like we don't, you know, like I don't have a lot of guys that we don't like go hang out but we have yeah. good we have good repertoire together yeah. like we have good conversations and then we just we might have dinner and then we go on yeah but the thing i remember about him was i was i was we were at the peabody hotel in memphis tennessee for saint jude uh the country cares yep and i'm standing outside and he comes out and he's like hey man he goes, uh, and he's wild, you know, he's wild. <laughs> he's yeah. like high strung, like really, you know, just like yeah. funny dude. And, and he goes, you want to go down to Bill Street? I was like, not really. He goes, man, I can't find a damn person in there that wants to go down there. He's like, come on, let's go have a beer. I'm like, dude, I'm going up for the night. I'm calling it a night. And, uh, and he was so, but, and it was only a quick, you know, little moment, you know. But what I remember most about it was thinking now, here goes this guy in town that nobody wanted to go give him, just get a beer with him. That was there, you know, because he he made the comment like, "I can't find a damn person who wants to go get a beer," and uh, or whatever it was he you know wanted to do have a drink or food or whatever it was. But thinking about it, it's like, boy, I bet this whole town would kill have a to be in that circuit now. 
And now everybody, Morgan Wallen's the greatest thing in the world. What about then? Did you go get a beer with him? Yeah. I would never try to, like, get a hold of him now because yeah. I didn't do it either. No. But if he came up and said, you know, I'd talk to him, and, be, and he's always been super nice to me. And, and when I've been around him, I mean, yeah. I'm, I can't say we're buddies or friends or anything, but 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 I just think about this thing. So Morgan and Hardy, I, I love that. I heard that Riley Green, damn good day to leave, and that was like, holy Moses. Talk about his song. There's bro. a hook. I love that. Um uh, I think this Post Malone stuff getting ready to come out is going to be awesome. I think it's going to be very cool. I really like it. I mean, and then I still like the same things I've always liked. I mean, I you know I love you know I love Randy Hauser obviously, and I'm and uh, and I love like Joe Nichols. I still love like to hear those guys sing because that's my era of like growing up and hearing yeah. those kind of records. But then there's you know there's tons of new stuff that I like. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of great stuff out there, and then there's just a lot of stuff that's just whatever, you know? Yeah. I don't know, like, I'm not, I always listen to, like, New Music Friday Same. on Spotify or, so, or whatever, yeah. or, like, Apple. I'll listen to a newer music, like, like playlist, and just try to just try to go through some things and find some things I like. And, uh, man, there's some great stuff. Like, I heard this girl the other day that I'd, I'd never heard, uh, Cassie Ash, is that her name? Yeah, oh, I heard dude, like her song the other day. Sing, I was dude. like, "Holy crap, dude! I've this seen, girl sings." I've seen her on writers' round. Like this yeah. girl's a singer, dude. Yeah, dude. like she's she can sing. She's one of those people that you go to see her, like where she just happens to be on a round in yeah. town, or when when she was doing yeah. that, and the whole bar would get quiet, which yeah. is my favorite moment at a round. Yeah, we, we host a lot of them. Yeah. Is when somebody's singing and people yeah. are it turns a bar like like a live oak or a tin roof yeah. into the listening upside room. down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I. But you know, to be honest, like I, like Stephen Wilson. Oh, dude! I wrote with Stephen for a long, long time. He's the first guy I ever took on the road to write. Like I was one of the first trips I think he went on as like a songwriter, like wow. on the road, and so we became like brothers, you know. And he lost his dad, and I was kind of around for a lot of that stuff. I, I, I say around during that time, yeah. And and we were God, I don't know how many songs we've written together, but written a ton of songs. I always was like. This guy's got to be an artist. He has to be. Yeah. Like it's, it's inevitable that this guy's going to be great. And and I I love him. I, I love God. I love Lamp. Uh, no, I mean <laughs> I I just there's so much stuff that I I do here now that there are things that catch me like the Dustin Lynch stars like confetti like that's not my type of song but I for some reason can't quit listening to it. Yeah. Like, it's a great song. Zach Bryan and the stuff he did with Casey Musgraves. I love it. Like the rest yeah. of it's cool. I don't know that I totally connect with it, but like yeah. There are songs that hit me, and I'm like, "This is really, really great." Yeah, the Zach know? Bryan thing. Myself and Nikki, to be honest, we didn't, we didn't get it. Mm -hmm. I didn't get it. Then I saw him at a festival yeah. this past year. Yeah. I saw, I got to see him at two festivals. I saw him at Rock the South in Coleman, Alabama, and yeah. Auburn Rodeo in Alabama. And bro, he comes out with like a twelve piece band. It's like a, <laughs> yeah, it's like a two hour Dave the Matthews. Banjo players passing out on stage. Bro, it's like a day, it's <laughs> yeah. like a Dave Matthews concert, and yeah. seeing the way that people react and sing every song. The live show is what made it made it for me because I'm like and I'm like why aren't the records like this twelve piece big band yeah. thing you know it's, yeah, it's yeah. interesting like that whole subgenre that's kind of coming yeah. up where it's like songwritery but it's not like the Nashville songwriter well but then there's like did you listen to Beyonce record yet I've listened to some of it how are you with it I mean I I I get it like I get why it's there I mean country's the cool thing right now yeah country's the thing that everybody's pivoting to like there's all the rock guys moving here what's right now. what's like but what to you like what is the country thing like the, when you say country's cool like what part of it just the aesthetic of the western style of yeah. nashville i yeah. mean bro like we're big in like the the butt rock space that's something that raise <laughs> rowdy has gotten yeah. raise rowdy we've yeah. found ourselves butt in rock. that's so good in with in with, that's our biggest social media that's account crazy. we have an account called butt rock and it's got like almost ninety thousand followers and it's memes of creed limp biscuit hinder saliva okay all those bands keep like, going but that limp biscuit the last record that they just put out with yeah. like uh dad vibes and all that yeah. my god i have spun that record so many times yeah, i can't count it. yeah it's coming back and those kind of guys are moving to tennessee we're mm -hmm. good buddies with the madden brothers from good charlotte yeah they are here in nashville yeah. now lit, lit yeah. is here yeah, in nashville those guys fred durst is rumored to be moving to williamson county there's a like that <laughs> whole so everybody we're like what the what what LA must have been like back in the eighties with Sunset yeah. Strip. That yeah. is what yeah. the energy is like. That's like yeah. we like 
folks from like New York and big media companies, like everybody's trying to get into Nashville. the country space in Nashville yeah. specifically. Yeah. Like we are having our moment right now as yeah. a genre. Yeah. And it's gonna bring in the outside things. Now, am I gonna listen to the Beyonce record? I still haven't yet. Yeah. But like I I understand yeah. where it's going and I don't hate it. Like, oh my God, this well, she's a freakish like, talent. I think I think like like my only thing the thing I always like I wonder about because there's still some great like first off like Keith Gaddis Big City Blues and going back for me like Jack Ingram Electric like those weren't necessarily like straight down the middle country records no. at all and there's this massive umbrella of what country music has become there's also a massive umbrella of like what pop music has become yeah and I think it's really cool that there's a number of records coming in the only thing I get confused on sometimes is when I listen there's a I'll just say this there's a record that I you have a couple songs on as a writer that's coming out, and I can't say anything yet, but the, um, another artist. And I listened to the record, and I was like, God, this is so good. And it's in Texas, a Texas record, and he was a hero of mine growing up, and I'm like, this is so good. And there was a writer in there, and it really made me think. And this writer said, how do they create a Grammy category for guys like y'all down there who make these really great records, but they don't necessarily get up the totem pole as to where the rest of the world can see it at the Grammys. And man, I went home that night and it just like, it crushed me because of guys like the Keith Gaddis records or the Waylon Payne or, or you know, uh, Randy Rogers, which is to me like one of the goats. Yes, you know, just a matter of time is one of the to me is one of the pinnacles for me as a country artist of records that I love. Yeah, but I get to the spot where I'm trying to figure out there are still genres of music, no matter which way you look at it. And I don't claim to be the countryest guy. I don't claim to have ever like been a horseback rider and a cowboy and whatever I've done it, but I did, wouldn't claim to be like, no, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, but what I'm trying to figure out is like, I don't ever, there are some records that don't get the recognition they can because something else comes along with some name on it that proposes to be what it's, it's not really hitting the mark. Yeah. But we're going to run with it because we're accepting. We're very accepting in this. Whereas I would say LA is probably not as accepting as Nashville is. Yeah. And how badass is it that Beyonce wants to be a part of a country music genre? Yeah. The post and I'm only using Beyonce it. because it's like the most current thing. Yeah, and, yeah. But I'm just saying it's like at the end of the day, if, and no one's asking my opinion, but if someone ever said like, you know, how could, how could, you know, it's like, don't confuse Grammy ballots just because someone came and claimed to make a country record. Yeah. Don't miss on, like, like don't miss on great records. Don't, yeah. because it's inevitable that those will want, like, like, they just go away. And then they reoccur later. And that's the sad part, is when they reoccur, because that person may have already moved on and you could have gotten the best of it when it was there. Yeah. And it's like that confusing line. And so like, I've, you know, it's so funny. Like I just, lo I love hearing people's thoughts as to like, I think it's awesome. Like, yeah. what do you find country? You know, because like I'm from South Texas and I I'm telling you right now, like I can't sell tickets in Texas to save a donkey's ass. Yeah. Like I can't, it's hard as shit. Yes. It's very difficult. Yeah. <clears throat> I go down there and I, I play this gig and or I mean I show up to a gig it's Wade Bowen and Jake Worthington. Jake's another guy I love. Oh by dude, the way. one of the best. And Wade, I love Wade, but uh I love Lamp. <laughs> Anyways, I show up to this gig and it's like everyone's looking at me like I'm in the boots and I'm in my Wranglers and I'm and I'm like living that life down there. But they still could t there's another side of you. Come on, where is it? Like yeah. there's another side and we're up there singing like a Brooks and Dunn song together or whatever it was. But they know yeah. what's that other part and how much are you in this? Like how much are you doing right now? Just cause you love those guys. Yeah. How much are you that guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's really neat to like go home and get bashed to hell by, by Texas. Texas is, is so interesting you know? though, because 
you were you were here in the era and you grew up in the era when yeah. the Texas guys didn't come here. Some of the songs yeah. came from here, but they didn't come here. And there was like this yeah. divide. And there's that famous live video from one of the ragweed shows where oh God. where they're they're not they were not they were very anti Nashville. Like, Always seventeen in your hometown is a great one. Yes. Yeah. And it's like they uh but now you have guys from that red dirt world yeah. that have label deals here and are yeah. part of this thing in Nashville. Yeah. Guys as far out there as Co Wetzel, guys yeah. like Corey Kent who are yeah. journeymen, guys like Parker yeah. who are journeymen. And then you have guys in Nashville now where Morgan Wallen, I mean he's big big as like biggest one of the biggest things in the world, but selling out a whole damn baseball stadium in, crazy. in Texas. Like, crazy. Like the the the, the crazy the, the bridge between the red dirt scene and the nashville scene and just it's interesting world. to see the things that work because like morgan could go down there and probably saw at cowboy yeah. stadium yeah i mean he's going to london on the fourth of july which i think is just hilarious that's that, crazy that we're sending man. a guy from east tennessee to play in england on the fourth of july <laughs> i kind of i kind of love it. i didn't even know that that's <laughs> yeah, wild yeah. But wild it, but it's like the but yeah it's like but then there's guys that are from texas that can't sell tickets in Texas. But what people don't understand, like down there, is like, man, I've seen some of the craziest redneckest shit I've ever seen oh, yeah. in my life oh, in dude. New Jersey Abs- and New York and yeah. Pennsylvania and yeah. and Washington and yeah. Canada. I mean, Canada. Oh, dude, we love Canada. Like, Canada is nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. And and uh and so it's just like really cool. And I love the fact that like just beyond music, like I just love the fact that the Western side of things are being paid attention to again because man like god lived a cowboy man like what what like one of the greatest lost arts that's just like people wanting to be a part of those things again and like going to rodeos and seeing like this giant diverse crowd of people and like i love that yeah you know i i really really do i think it's like i think it's really cool and so all that to say it's like it's just really interesting you know it's like music has become a giant blender of just there's so much out there. Yeah. And that's a great thing is you and I can not agree on something, yeah. but we can go in there and find something we like. Yeah. It just, it's just the way it is. Yeah. There's so much, it's so awesome. much, there's so much out there now yeah. in this era where folks can really yeah. put out. Right. It's a lot easier to get music out now. Yeah. yeah. It's so much easier. It's so much easier to get an audience now. Well, you like, would think, I mean, it took me like four years to put something else out, but here we are. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody's, everybody's a little different. And the traditional movement yeah. in country music, like, coming back and it's like you have these outsiders coming in put like the the beyonce's the posties the lana del rey's like folks like that doing the the reverse taylor swift thing where it's like instead of going pop they're going going country but then you have guys and girls like this traditional sound in the songwriting i think there's so much love for songwriters now yeah. Not not in the not in the Spotify payment set. We're still working on a lot of that stuff, but it's like yeah. the appreciation for the the songwritery style yeah. of of songs. Yeah. I think is higher now, and I think it's a big deal that those those projects are recognized because <clears throat> in that kind of songwriter too. Because I mean, you got to. I mean, there. I to me, it's like there are some great songwriters like. How has Tom Douglas not had like 1,050 number ones? Because all those songs are amazing. Yeah. And, and, and to know that people, I don't think you have to just write this song to a hook anymore. And I keep saying this, like, I've caught myself saying this recently. Like, like I love, like, I love the fact that I am so appreciative of the fact, more, better. Like I, I'm so appreciative of the fact that "Take It On Back" or "A Little Bit of You" or songs of that nature did what they did, and I think there's a place for those songs, and I think there's a place for songs that aren't so deep because not everybody's willing to get. It's like going to therapy, you know. Like, yeah. and I've done a lot of that, and it's like there's some days I just don't want to get that deep. I don't, yeah. I don't want to talk about certain things some days, and some days I do. And when I want to go find one of those songs, it's nice to know that people still connect with that, you know, like. Cody Johnson's a perfect example, Dude, like the yeah. guy that can do that. I think Parker is too. Like I think Parker's, you know, like I think Burn It Down's a little lighthearted, you know, as far as in the sense of things that he can't like is obviously fully capable of writing. But God, what a song! Like it's a great freaking song. Song I I, I love it. I, I mean I love John Randall. He's one of my dearest friends on earth, and yeah. and he can make a damn good record on guys. And but 
I also love the fact that, that that artists are still willing to go both ways with that. It's like Zach Bryan writing something like I Remember Everything, which is really like this art. To me, that's like a that's a piece of art. And then he can go do, I don't know any of his, I'm sorry, I don't really know any of his other yeah. songs, but but I know that there are things in there that I've listened to that are lighthearted. And they're yeah. just, they're just, they're just, they're meaningful for that. Yeah. And uh, I think it's awesome that, that, that the songwriting element now is more than just lighthearted. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And now, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now talking about Ashland City, bro. Yeah. Yeah. With, with that now where you're, where you're getting to put releases out into the world again mm-hmm. and this obviously being it being a huge year for you um what went into like having, yeah. well, having what you just said yeah where you can have that mix of stuff and yeah. there's room for it all yeah well talking about talking about ashland city and the name for the project i love that too people ashland city yeah, a, a part of of the middle tennessee that doesn't yeah. get talked about a whole yeah. lot that is yeah. just beautiful country yeah. um and there's there's good hard working people in there, but there's also some dark sides to it. You know? Yeah, there is. Uh, I mean, I always say that that's like, a, you know, it's like it's like it was, Ashland City for me was the perfect mix of like Texas and you know the way I grew up and then the city, you know, because it had elements of both. So Ashland City came about. I I built. We'd moved back from Texas and moved up here, bought a house and built a little studio and. Uh, it was kind of like I had just made, let's see, I had just come off of, I think I'd made, well, I made a record. In, God, I've made so many dang projects. I made a record in Texas. I'd come back. John was getting really busy with everything he was doing. I mean, from Miranda to Parker to everything. And John was like one of the first guys to like really say, like, you should just take this on yourself and like see how far you can take it. And so I did. And I just started trying to figure out what songs fit and there's a couple songs on there that are older like uh, wild and tame which was me and keith gaddis and ray wiley hubbard wrote that together <laughs> what, like, a, what a writing what room a, to be in bro. what a day <laughs> what you a know? room to be in <laughs> one of those moments that like now like then i didn't get it but now i look back like i bet i'm probably one of the few people that can say they got to do that you know like yeah. what a cool what a great experience and um and so and so there's that and then there was another one I wrote with Casey Bethard and uh, Ryan Tyndall that's uh kind of the single off that project called Never Got Around to That. But the rest of it was just like wanting to make a studio and or wanting to make a record in a new spot in a new place and try to find some new inspiration and you know I wrote with a number of different people wrote with some people that I had kind of written with but hadn't spent too much time like Ryan Beaver one of my dear friends him and Neil Medley we wrote so uh, wrote a cool song for that project, and then and then it just it was just kind of like I don't know that there was necessarily like here's what I'm going for. It was just kind of like I just want to see what this place brings out of me. Yeah, and we and I found that record, you know, and and um, it's just a it was a really cool project to make. I mean, I was looking out, I, and I and I kind of named all these projects like. There are names, and I and I think it was like there were kind of it was kind of like Easter eggs, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and there's there are, and there's some things I I'll just let it be, you know, like let people kind of see what they want to see until I until I kind of put it all out, and yeah. it'll make all make sense. But it's just they're just projects from different places and just different inspiration. Nothing's supposed to sound the same because they came from different. They came from completely different places of the continent, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I mean, there's a record I made down in Alabama in a cabin out on the woods in Alabama Ooh. where there's, like, no one there. And then there's, yeah. you know, the Somerville Project, which came from going out to South Carolina and spending time there and finding inspiration writing songs there. So it's just it was it's just been a, a process of, like, trying to figure out how to – how to how to be open to accepting new ideas and and things to push me as an artist yeah. and that was kind of my first foray into like producing something completely by myself that was going to get released yeah and so that's a rewarding that, feeling when you can it. when you can be that hands on with yeah. your own with your own project bro yeah well and i i mean i i tracked it myself yeah. i engineered a, you know the the front half of it and then obviously my buddy casey wood who's an incredible engineer mixed everything and edit did a lot of editing and so on and so forth but it was a it was a great project and it was also like i got to get with some guys that you know adam and i had a you know obviously when when he went to play for brothers and we kind of we kind of fell out for a few years and and uh but he's still like a brother to me and that was my first time that we got to do anything that would get to go out into the world and because the stuff we did years before, it obviously never did. And and um, 
So I got to work with him and Russ Paul, killer steel player, came in and played some steel on it. My buddy Ryan, that's out with Kelsey Ballerini now, playing guitar. It just, it was just, it was not like I wasn't going after every studio guy in Nashville. I was trying to call buddies, you know, because yeah. I just moved back here. I wanted it to feel very like, you know, just get friends in a room and make a record. Yeah. And so that's what we did and just kind of built it from the ground up. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed yeah. to be. That's the way it, what it used to be was yeah. making making cool shit with your friends. Yeah. And for you to be able to come back to town and reconnect with all those guys exactly. and that being a focal point of that reconnection, that rekindling yeah. of the friendships and those relationships, bro. Yeah. Like And I'm just I mean, I'm just excited for there to be a body of work out there that goes back to like the and, and, and hence the reason that I like kind of brought up like, you know, like the Beyonce record or the Zach Bryan stuff or the Morgan stuff. It's like they're all different projects. And I'm not sure that everyone's gonna relate to every single one of them. I'm not looking for that. Yeah. I'm just looking for to 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 for my own sake too, like kind of looking at it going like what's the most valid I'm still figuring me out. I feel like we're always doing that. Like, I feel like music is a constant bowling ball. It's like, you know, what pin is it today? You know, yeah. which one am I going after? And, and, uh, but I feel like I've, I've just kind of figured out, like, there's no one thing for me. Like, yeah. I just, I just, I, whatever, like, I want to capture feelings and I want to capture emotion in a moment when I'm there and I want to put that on tape. Absolutely. And, uh, and so that's been a very, you know, integral part of like my growth as an artist. And, uh, and, you know, I'm a little older now too. So like, you know, it's like, I, I, I'm starting to understand things a little more than I did then. Yeah. What's, what's, um, what's life like at 31 now being back in Nashville versus yeah. young age moving here? Different for sure. Like, you're not gonna see me at a bar. Yeah, you know? I remember I, seeing. I remember seeing yeah, you at Red Door, yeah. bro. I yeah. remember those days. I had my days of I could rage and I could go all night, but man, I, you know, I just think now it's like just I, I take life more seriously now than I did then. I, you know, I, I went through you know my mental health struggles and I went through a lot of that, and I think for me now has been more just kind of like falling back in love with like the kid that I was. That you 16 know? year old kid exactly being like, I can do this. Music exactly. Thing. It's like falling back in love with the idea that like, I love what I do. You know, it's like, and understanding that, you know, my best work has always come from being like very well aware, not rolling into a studio, trying to sing, you know, the note that's way up here after a night of all night beer and pickleback shots at uh <laughs> red door, you know, <laughs> you know, so so I, it's just it's 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 like it's different, but it's also like life before then, because yeah. I'm still trying to find my way back in. You know, I'm still trying to find my way back into this world of like, you know, the unknown again. And and that's been the fun part is like not thinking that you well you had a couple of hits so you can go like I don't even think about those things anymore. All I think about is like now and this new growth and this new period of music and this new period of being an artist. It's like that's what I'm most excited about, you know, like I don't, I don't look backwards anymore. You know, there's no looking back and there's no like trying to, 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 you know, I try to mend certain things, but, but for me, it's just like, what's next always. Like yeah. I, I'm not getting caught up. I mean, we're sitting here talking about this project and I'm thinking about like, well, I can need to go home and cut this song and do this and do that. And, and, and so like, I'm always trying to just keep moving forward, but also like be very present in a moment because I don't want to look back and be thankful for what the time we're spending now. Like, I don't want to realize that a year from now. I want to know that now. Yeah. You know? And, and, uh, so it's like just understanding more now, just how to be more present, how to be more, you know, in the moment, but yeah. also like not go backwards. And know? that's something you can do a lot more now and that you've had that reflection yeah. period to yeah. where you can be in the moment and you have to have those moments of it's all a wave, bro. Yeah. It's all a fucking wave. I like, know. Up and I down. I feel like right now we're getting right up there, but now you know having yeah. been down like, yeah. to get back up. Well, I go to a right after this, so it's just going to go back down. <laughs> <laughs> who you writing, who, <laughs> yeah. who, who you writing with? Uh, today I'm writing with a new a girl that I've, I've never written with her, this girl named Lauren LaRue. Like, I guess okay. she wrote Roxanne. Oh, nice. So there you go, man. It's like yeah. speaking of Nashville and, and people just com you know writing things completely outside of what a Nashville Does it feel weird from. being like the veteran in the room now? No, I mean, I, dude... You know, here's what's funny. Uh, there's an artist. 
I will not name and I will not say it off camera because I just I just I've kept it to myself. But there is an artist that I saw one day at a publishing house and uh I come into I come in, I'll never forget this. I came in to write and the artist comes up, he's like, Hey man, I gotta tell you something. I was like, Okay, he's like, what the hell is going on? And he's like, dude, I was your biggest fan in high school. Giant fan. And like, meanwhile, dude, like I was basically should have been in high school when I started having success. You know, like yeah. I would have been in like a freshman, sophomore, whatever in college. And I was like, well, man, I really, he's like, you, you don't under, you don't know. And I'm like, no, dude, I like, I know you don't understand it. And now like watching him pop off and then him, you know, like I'm still getting used to the fact that like, I've been here for a minute. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't necessarily have like people coming up like, Hey, if we take a picture or like, Oh my God, we're your biggest yeah. fan. Tell us about how you wrote this or I told you, know, like that, that doesn't but really I, but happen. I, but, but I mean, just like you talk about like yeah. as coming in as coming in as a, as a young guy and getting yeah. in these rooms with these guys that have been yeah. doing it for a while, just being like, being with the, yeah like writing with someone that's newer to town oh yeah like, i mean what's that, what's that kind of feel? do you feel that like full circle kind of thing or like i what? think i'm probably learning more because they're what got them here is current you know what i mean and so like i'm i'm kind of adjusting to like their speed a little bit but then also knowing like okay well this is what i know about writing a song and yeah. this is what i know will happen and won't happen as long as i'm in the room and um uh, but but I learn more probably than they do because, like, I'm curious to see what makes their wheel spin. Yeah. Because what makes mine spin is a whole lot different. I don't listen to a ton of new music. You know, I listen to a lot of old stuff. And, yeah. And, and they're so dialed in that that's what I like. Like, today I'm looking forward to it. It's like I've got an idea. I've, I, you know, I would consider myself to still think very currently. But, but, uh, it's, it's, it's very much like, um, I've never tried to let like fall behind. I've always tried to stay up to date, but like, I know that my speed and their speed is a little different. Cause I'm like very slow. Yeah. Like I have an idea and I got to see it and I have to see the gotta, visual. Gotta, gotta let it marinate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so they can come in and it's like rocket fire, you know? And so that's kind of been interesting to, to, to be the older guy in the room. That's still not that old, but been around a little longer. It's like, it's really interesting. And so for like today's right, like, you know, a girl like this is like, obviously she's wildly talented. She's had a ton of cuts and had hit songs. And, and so I'm willing to like, and let me learn today. Like, what do you have? Like, I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, I want to ride that boat for a day, but, I, but, here's an idea for me and how can you know how can you help me take this somewhere because like you look at like guys like keith urban like man what a genius like sure he made golden road and be here and you know love pain the whole crazy thing all these great records that were very guitar driven and band driven and but look at him now like dude he might be whatever age he is but it's like he's 20 yeah because he's still keeping up you know, it's just brilliant. And because he's that way, because he's willing to learn, yeah. you know, from these younger guys. So it's really yeah, neat. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. What's something you wish you could tell yourself? Uh, that's a loaded question. It's like, God. Like, going back going back to that kid. Younger me. Younger you. Yeah, yeah like, younger you, like, the, the kid that's playing at, at High Watt. The kid yeah. that's jamming, and, and you're having all these... You're you're doing all all those meetings and like shits like yeah. popping and everything like close that. the door behind you. Probably, yeah, I think so because it's like don't let everybody in, you know. It's like not even the ones that you think are like the greatest. Like just leave some space for yourself. You know what I mean? It's like because I I gave a lot of myself to everyone, including people that were like really close to me, and uh certain times I watch that backfire and, and, um, you know, from friends and stuff. And it's like, I, I just wish that I would have made a little more time to myself to like really hone in on, on me. But I also think like too, just tell them like it, it gets rough, but it's like smooth sailing after, you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, I, that I love that. And, you know, I watch like, I, I think about this a lot. I watched this thing on Diane Nyad the other night, swam from Cuba to Florida, Florida Keys. 
and I was watching her swim and you know the first like however many miles she did and she's like almost 70 years old when she swims this by the way done it like five times and stung by man of wars and stung in the eye by box jellies and like made it while while the doctors got stung and going into like cardiac arrest and she's swimming through the night and she gets in that gulf stream and it just starts whipping her ass and it's like really hard wind and it's choppy and she's not really going anywhere but then she gets to the other side of it she makes it to the shore and she just like you know, she obviously like vomits all this stuff. And I was thinking about it, I was like, man, isn't that funny? It's like when you're a kid, it's smooth sailing. Then you get to the Gulf Stream and then it's like, oh God, what am I doing? And then you get to the other side of it and you get rid of all that crap. Yeah. You just you get it out of you. And it wears you out. But then you wake up and you realize, man, I really accomplished something here. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of how I look at life now. It's like there's gonna be some things that 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 there's going to be some days that are tough, but I think they just get better if you let them, you know, and, 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 and just being thankful. It's like, but, but yeah, I mean, just keep the door closed behind you. You know what I mean? When Amen. you decide to go in there, keep it closed. Yeah. Just leave some space for Amen. yourself. Well, dude, I appreciate the hell dude, out of I you thanks for having coming me. on and talking. I've been looking forward to man, this one too. and thank you for, thank you for doing this. Yeah, and man. Congrats on the new project. Congrats on oh, like man. I'm excited for what what's coming this yeah, chapter of of Chase Bryant. Well, man, I'm I'm, I'm excited really too. Am. I have no idea what it is, but we I don't, thank we don't, you, man. We don't either, but I can yeah. tell you what. Everybody that I told I was doing this episode with, like that I was having yeah. you on, they yeah. were like, "Fuck yeah, yeah, There's awesome, new man. Chase Bryant coming." Like we're excited. Man. So, dude, there, it's it's awesome. Thank man. you so much for taking time to have me too. I appreciate it. Of course, man. Yeah, Anything man. we can ever do with you're you're part of the Rays Rowdy family yeah, now. Man. So yeah, man. we we appreciate the heck out dude. of you, dude. And Good thank to you see so brother. much. Um, y'all be sure to check out our boy Chase Bryant, Ashland City, the new project. Uh, it is out right now. It dropped today. The release of this episode, um, and be sure to follow along with chase bryant um as all the stuff transpires and all the new music is coming out and uh yeah everything that he's got in the world follow him on all the socials thank you guys as always for listening watching uh for more on us visit raisedrowdy.com um and follow along um subscribe rate like all of that stuff tell your mama and them and uh we will see you next time for my boy chase bryant i'm matt Brill. this has been outside the round